This is the N-1 rocket, developed by the Soviet Union as Russia's answer to the American Saturn rocket, in an era where both sides of the Cold War were trying to stay one step ahead when it came to advancing rocket technology. The completed design of the N-1 was big but complex, with 30 engines and a total thrust of over 45 million newtons. This would make it the most powerful rocket built at the time with the projected ability to carry up to 95 tons of payload into low Earth orbit. After all the preparation, the first test launch of the N-1 rocket finally took place on February 21, 1969. However, the launch was a disaster, with the rocket exploding in the air just seconds after liftoff. A second N-1 launch was attempted in July 1969, but this also ended in failure when the vehicle fell from the launch pad and exploded. Improvements were made to the N-1 and a third launch was attempted in 1971, but also resulted in failure due to a rotation problem. This was followed by a fourth failed launch in 1974. The Soviets ultimately shut down the N-1 project in 1974 and canceled all plans for a fifth launch. Since then, the world had not witnessed such a powerful rocket until SpaceX Starship appeared. However, the same fate as the N-1. We all know that its maiden voyage in April began and ended in flames when the spacecraft lost control and exploded during stage separation just minutes into the flight. These can almost elide the unspoken hitch here, that building an interplanetary spaceship is really, really difficult. Can Starship be a big mistake? Let's see what famous scientists and engineers just declared about that. Everything about Starship says big. The rocket is actually a two-part machine. The first stage, known as the Super Heavy, stands 70 meters, 230 feet tall, and is powered by 33 engines that's compared to the SLS and the Saturn V, producing more than 7.6 million kilogram, 16.7 million pounds of thrust, or nearly twice the SLS muscle. Its upper stage, built to carry cargo and crew and also named Starship, stands 50 meters, 164 feet tall, and is itself equipped with another six of the same 33 engines that power the first stage. Together, the overall stack, made entirely of stainless steel, stands a sleek and silvery 40 stories tall. More impressively, Starship can land back on Earth so they can be reused, reducing costs. The entire vehicle will be capable of lifting 100 metric tons, 220,000 pounds, of cargo and people into space on regular low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower, disassembled. For most, this massive size is admirable. However, the Mars Society president and aerospace engineer Dr. Robert Zubrin said that a problem with Starship is that because it's so massive, it takes a great deal of facilities to be able to refuel it, so he anticipates that the few Starships that first land on Mars will stay on Mars. To begin the Mars colonization effort, the rocket company's mission will be to deliver a massive amount of cargo, including vital equipment to Mars, and possibly robots with capabilities to set everything up before the first human arrival. Part of the first deliveries to Mars could include supplies such as power generators, large batteries, and solar panels that would aid to build slash power a propellant plant to refuel Starship and eventually come back to Earth. Zubrin pointed out that it would take 6 to 10 football fields of solar panels to refuel Starship within a 500-day stay on Mars. Starship is capable of carrying 100 passengers plus 100 tons of cargo, Zubrin believes the first missions will not transport 100 passengers and that a crew of about 20 astronauts to set up everything up is safer to prepare for future arrivals of over 50 people. Zubrin says, building a mini version of Starship to send to Mars has a better advantage to sending it and bringing it back to Earth. It would have tremendous advantage for an exploration architecture because it wouldn't need a big base in order to refuel and come back. Elon Musk was averse to that. He feels that developing one thing is much better than developing two things. But Zubrin believes SpaceX is capable of building both versions of a Starship, a full scale and a mini, especially seeing how quickly they develop things. Besides, he explained that landing a Starship on Mars will have some issues. Zubrin believes landing a Starship on the moon will not work because it will have a gigantic plume upon landing that it would blow a crater. 
he says. It wouldn't land, it will dig a crater and fall over. Explaining that both the Moon and Mars need to have landing pads built beforehand to land a massive vehicle such as Starship so that they can take the plume of the Starship on Mars is a bit less of a problem, but it is still a major problem. If that can't be resolved, he may be forced to go the mini Starship route. Zubrin stated, In order to land a Starship on the Moon, someone has to go there first and build a landing pad. So that it's not blowing debris all over the place and building itself a crater to fall into. That's not a good architecture, it just isn't. Zubrin believes there are also other issues with the Starship architecture. For instance, the Starship is a stainless steel hull and he can do the entry from Earth orbit from that because it has a very low ballistic coefficient which reduces the heating load. So he can do this with a steel ship without heat resistant tiles or in anything of this sort. But coming back from Mars, there is a much higher heating load than coming back from LEO. So he has to make specialized starships that are reinforced thermal protection. Adding that the Earth to Earth version of Starship will work, surface to surface transportation is great. Not only Zubrin, but the famous professor Brian Cox also doubts Starship's abilities. Musk said manned missions to Mars will happen by 2029 on Starship, but Professor Cox doesn't think this is plausible. SpaceX are a remarkable company. They did do something astonishing, which is transforming the economics of spaceflight. You never know with them, they're really good engineers. But my guess is that Musk's prediction is optimistic. Professor Cox also said he would not go to Mars tomorrow even if SpaceX technology existed. I'd be surprised to see anyone there before the 2040s at the earliest, although I'd love to be wrong, he said. I think it's even more difficult than going to the moon was in the 1960. Apollo was at the edge of our capabilities in the 60. It was right at the edge of available technology. And I think Mars is perhaps even slightly beyond that at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if we've started sending the infrastructure within the next 10 years. Well, these doubts are completely understandable as Starship isn't real yet. All eyes will now be on the next orbital launch test expected sometime in the coming days. Even if it is a success, no one knows whether SpaceX will be able to achieve its vision of launching the rockets daily and reusing them many times. Anyway, many others have put their trust in Starship. The date of the first crewed launch of Starship has not been firmly set, but it will be an Earth orbital mission commanded by billionaire and veteran space traveler Jared Isaacman. Isaacman commanded the Inspiration4 mission aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft in 2021. Yusaka Maezawa, a Japanese fashion magnate, has also bought nine seats aboard a Starship rocket for his Dear Moon mission. A circumlunar journey that was originally planned for the end of this year and now will take place sometime after Isaac Mann's flight. Much more important, though, is Starship's role in NASA's Artemis program. In April 2021, NASA selected the Starship Upper Stage as the vehicle that will serve as the program's human landing system, the 21-century version of the Apollo era's lunar module. Finally, Starship is Musk's favorite child to go to Mars. So, there is a lot of riding on this. It must succeed. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space-important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we...